Goes to Ryan Harris, he gets on his left foot, he drives down to the forward line there, looking for Lynch at ground level. All oh, the Monty guys are mopping up close to goal there. <laughs> then they come over to the uh, pavilion side, the ball's bouncing, 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 comes in the hands of Woodhams. He looks to pass it to the centre of the ball, but his kicks uh, kick is intercepted, and then Woodhams unfortunately gets in the back of... Montmorency player there and the resultant free kick goes to Montmorency. Nan Curvis then got in the back of number 24 being Jesse Donaldson for Monty. Monty bring the ball down to the half forward area. Oh, big fella leads out there. He's a mountain of a man, this man. It's Patrick. Is it Patrick? No, it's not. It's Osaka or Halpin. Well, I might have it wrong, but it might be. Uh, it was Fitzgerald, it is Paddy Fitzgerald, 61. He's kicked in and hit the mark there on this occasion. We've got, uh, looks like Ewitt's playing in defence this quarter for McLeod. We're ringing the changes here. Finish the handball's in the hand of O'Brien here. He drives to the outer wing position where there's a nice mark taken there by McLeod. The umpire says, well, we won't pay that. We'll just let the play go on. And Monty bring the ball down uh, forward where they drop what they sh should have... They drop what they perhaps should have uh, taken. The umpire then ruled there's a free kick against Nan Curvis for tackling a, a little high. Uh, Nan Curvis obviously not happy with the decision. You see the vision, make your own mind up. Uh, Pettifer comes in directly in front, 15 metres out, and just goes pop, and it goes through for a goal. So first goal of the third quarter goes to Monty. They go to 9-6. Liddy McLeod back on three goals, six. <laughs> Just have a little sip of the coffee there. Well, bloody good day for a coffee, I tell you. Had a lovely pasty there at half time. Okay, back at the centre bounce. We've got Matty Waller in the ruck here up against. Oh, helping. Up they go. Ball comes off the hands of those guys. Come first, forced further forward by Monty. In the way there was Nan Curse. He got the ball across to Scooter White. He drives the ball down over the centre, but it's all Monty here. They repel and they bring the ball. Might have been through Haynes there. Down to half forward was a lovely mark taken there by number 30 for Monty, who will be. Well, he's not in the record. He'll be on the team sheet. Just now, number 30, who happens to be uh, Luke Collins, lines up from goal, 20 metres out, directly in front, and has no problems popping it through for another goal to Monty. They stretch the lead out now to a massive seven goals. 10 goals, six to McLeod on three goals, six. <laughs> Uh, it's not going to be a memorable day for McLeod today. It's going to be one to, one to forget. Have a hot shower, perhaps have a beer and get home by the fire, I reckon. Okay, umpire Fife throws the ball in the air, long in the ruck now, wins the tap out. Comes down only as far as the Montmorency players. They try and hurl oh, the big fella there, oh, help, and he, he tried to burst his way through through there was all wrapped up as a free kick to McLeod and the ball go, goes to ball goes to Ryan Ryan Harris now there's some interference here by number 20 and he's caused a 50 metre penalty to McLeod that's Luke Jackson has caused that the ex the Diamond Creek player comes to Ryan Harris he shoots oh he's kicks that touched off the mark there 
It's right down the teeth of goal here. Players in hard there. Oh, Shane Tennant's done very well there for Montmorency. Gets the ball out to his teammate close to the boundary line. It's forced over the line and out of bounds. Ball being thrown back into play now. Host of players around the ball here. It's in the forward pocket for McLeod. McLeod kicking right of screen. The lower plenty into the ground. Players going in there hard. Oh, they're all wrapped up. The umpire has no option but to cause a call a ball up. Throws the ball in the air. Ball comes down to Jackson on this occasion. He gets the ball out to the half-back flank area. In there was O'Brien. He's done well. He got, he's gone to ground. But his handball's intercepted by... Montmorency, they've kicked the ball further forward, it's over the line and out of bounds. Billy Damaneski to take the resultant free kick for McLeod. He just goes straight down the line to half forward. Waiting at ground there as a Montmorency player, but he's all wrapped up. The umpire says, we'll have another ball up. Seven goal lead here to uh, Montmorency. Early stages, third quarter. John Andrew picks up the ball, runs around on his right foot, gets a nice kick down forward, but oh, but in the way there is the big fella. And I think he might be the captain of Montmorency in Tennant. Doesn't show on the record here, but I think he might be the captain, number 31. Been out for the first half of the season, but he's back for the boys today. Now, Mc Montmorency going to attack there, but in the way there at half-back is Chris Long, which takes a nice mark. Oh, his kick's not nice though, it's a, it's a on the ground grubby kick, just gets up towards the wing position where it's taken by Montmorency and they're all wrapped up and the umpire says we'll have the ball up. Big O helping in the ruck there, Long gets his hands on the ball first, comes to Stephen but he's all wrapped up and thrown into the turf. There's another ball up. There's not much of excitement happening in the game today. But uh, Luke Jackson there gets the ball further forward for Montmorency. And there's a nice mark taken there by the big fella in Fitzgerald. He's marked in the forward pocket about 30 metres from goal. 45 degree angle. Fences his chances. He's going back to shoot for goal. He comes in. Looks nice off the boot. It's going close, but uh, it's not good enough. And eventually, it's forced through for a behind to Montmorency. Okay, now this time Scooter White's going to bring the ball back into play. Kicks the ball to himself. He goes this way, he goes that way. Oh, he's, he's changed his mind there. Eventually, he had to get onto his right foot and kicks the ball out to the V inside where the ball is from the big the pack there is battled over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of the Montmorency Pavilion. Host of players around the ball here. Ball being thrown back into play. Oh, oh Mc <laughs> there's a McLeod guy there nearly had his head pulled off. The umpire says, oh, no, I won't worry about that. We'll just have a ball up. Ball thrown in the air. Oh, helping in there. Eventually the ball comes down to ground level. In there's uh, Bianchin. Oh, he's cleverly tunnel ball the ball back to looking for Dave Adams. Eventually come to Stephen. Uh, then Stephen's gone back in after the ball. But he's kicked smothered and it's over the line and out of bounds. Okay, ball being thrown back in there. Oh, come down to Woodens, he gets a nice handball over to Richard Andrew, gets the ball up to half forward, oh, in the way there, a Mont Montmorency player gets the ball to Big O Halpin, oh, he picked it up and just dropped it like a hot cake, umpire's called play on there, eventually come to Ryan Harris, he's driven the ball forward, oh, well, there's a nice mark taken there by Bianchin, uh, he gets a handball over to his teammate in... Dave Adams who shoots for goal and has missed to his near side and it's through for a behind to McLeod. One more behind takes that score for McLeod to three goals, seven, 25 points. Trailing Montmorency, 10, seven, 67. What happened there? And uh, we're about 10 minutes into the third quarter. 
Ball on the outer side there. Oh, it's a big mud wrestle here. And it's freezing cold here. Everyone just wants to get home and get by the fire, I think. And then we'll let's have a sip of coffee, I think. As we have a sip of coffee, it was Tennant who got the ball out to his team, had to get the ball down to uh, half forward, but waiting back there is McLeod defender. Damaneski, who's taken a nice mark. He's handballed it over to the running O'Brien, who's got it out to Bianchin, who is very quick. He's handballed to Andrew Murray, but oh, he's in, under pressure there, Murray. He's unable to spot a teammate. Eventually comes to Dave Adams, and he's all wrapped up near the boundary line. And the umpire says, I can't quite see here, just up from the McLeod bench. Yes, it's a ball up, just inside on the boundary line. Okay, eventually, Scooter White got a kick in there. It might have been touched and forced over the line and out of bounds. Ball being thrown back into play again. Oh, Stevens in there. He's been in everything today. Number 15 for Montmorency. Ball comes down there looking for Benny Walton. In hard there is Dan Curvis and Andrew Murray. And they've forced the ball over the line and out of bounds. Now the ball being thrown back on the true centre wing position for V inside of the ground. Thrown back in there. Might have been Nugent in the ruck there. It was. It comes down to uh, Stephen. He's all wrapped up there. Nan Curvis has done well for McLeod. He's got a boot to ball. They've got to force the ball further forward. Oh, McLeod guys going in hard there, and they're all, all wrapped up there. The umpire says we'll have another ball up. That was Harris going through there. Nugent in the ruck there, and Walter. Ball comes down to no one in particular. Jackson's got it there for. for Montmorency and he's thrown into the turf there. The umpire says, give it to me and we'll have another ball up. Okay. Ball eventually comes down to, might have been to Walton on that occasion. He runs around on his left foot. Gets the ball further down. Might have, no, it was actually Sinclair. He got the ball further down the ground. Now, there's been... Uh, umpire Fife has... Uh, very demonstrative here and he's indicating that there's been a, a throw slash scoop by the Monty player and the free kick goes to O'Brien, the McLeod defender. His nice kick comes up along the uh, wing position where the ball is belted out of the hands of uh, Dave Adams and over the line and out of bounds. Waiting for the ball to be thrown back in here. We seem to have a substitute boundary umpire here today. I don't know what happened here today. Anyway. Ball thrown back into play. Oh, it's, cr it's close to the, uh, the wing position where it came to. Well, it came down to uh, Keenan. He got it over to Luke Jackson. He got it down further forward where it was marked by Billy Davineski. He's able to transverse the ball a little bit further up the ground where it's been all bottled up here. And umpire Fife has called for another ball up. Ball. Ball thrown in the air, there's a, a Fife has ruled, there's a free kick to Walter from the ruck contest. They get the ball to half forward, but it's all Keenan in there. He's all wrapped up there for Montmorency. And he's not too keen to go to ground at the moment. Uh, there in the mud, yes, stands, he stands up and accepts a, that the umpire's decision will be a ball up. There's a kick forward there by Andrew for uh, McLeod. However, it's been marked deep in defence by uh, Craig Flint, the big strong defender for Montmorency. Now, there's another Monty player here who's looking very unwell at this stage. It might have been uh, Flint and he's decided to let his teammate take the, take the kick. The umpire rules now. Flint's got to take the kick. And the handball, the ball. Back to throw it back to him. He gets the ball down to the centre where Walton's taking a nice mark. Bursts through the centre and gets the ball up to, to the full forward area. The big fella, yeah, Fitzgerald, was up there or oh, at ground level there. It's, it's O'Brien in first there. He clears the ball nicely over to the V inside, looking for and finding Andrew Murray, who takes a nice mark. Half back flank side. He drives the ball up along the uh, 
centre wing position where there's a nice lead up there by Richard Andrew. Beautiful kick by Murray there. Uh, not such a good kick on this occasion by uh, Richard Andrew and he's only resulting in kicking a man on the mark. And the ball is then forced over the line and out of bounce. Sean back into play. Oh, Monty's working the ball beautifully here. But the boundary line beats them all on this occasion and it's over the line and out of bounds. Okay. Ball being thrown back into play. Big O helping in the ruck there. Ugly won the tap out. Eventually comes down at ground. Dave Adams is in hard there. Uh, Stevens is in hard there. Eventually is kicked off the ground by Hewitt. Oh, nice pick up there by Richard Andrew. Got it over his brother in John Andrew. Gets the ball further forward to a dangerous spot where the ancients at ground level. In the way there he is a long. He gets a scramble kick forward. Oh, Malikin's taken high, dragged out of the contest. Play goes on. Umpire says, give it to me and we'll have a ball up. Throws the ball in the air. Big O helping there and long. Uh, Montmorency play, scrambles the ball under his foot, gets a kick forward. Well, but only as far as uh, Andrew Murray, his kick's interceptor comes to John Andrew. Gets the ball out to Matty Wilder. He gets a handball over, but it's intercepted by Monty. Monty player tackled heavily there. Dave Adams gets it. He's all wrapped up. He goes back in again. Players going in very hard here. Stevens in there again. Eventually, Monty scramble the ball forward of the centre to where Betty Wilder gets the ball. But, oh, he's swung around. He's all wrapped up. And the umpire says... We won't give a free kick against him. We'll just ball it up. Throws the ball in the air. And one down by O'Halpin. Comes down to Walton. He picks it all up, gets it up further forward where it might have been Petter for on that occasion. It was. He tried to pick out his teammate. Didn't quite get to him on that occasion. Eventually comes to Matty Wally. Gets a nice handball over to Dave Adams. He's, his kick is intercepted. Comes to the hands of Andrew Murray. He does waste no time and kicks it up to a dangerous spot. And dangerous it is because it comes to Long. And then it comes out to Lynch. He runs around on his left foot. He shoots for goal. It looks good. And he's put it through for a goal. The fourth goal of the day to, Montmer to McLeod. They go to 4-7 trailing. Monty on 10 goals, 7. <laughs> Just have another sip of the coffee here. So we wait for the ball to be brought back to the centre of the ground. We've got big O helping in the ruck here up against Long. Dave Adams and Richard Andrew at ground level along with John Andrew for McLeod. Comes, to, comes down to ground level. Richard Andrew is in there first. Oh, they're into the back of him. Play goes on. Eventually it's first forced further forward by Montmorency. Stevens in everything here today as they scramble through the mud. Oh, Stevens back in again. <laughs> Actually might be just Steven. It is. It's a Michael Stephen, number 15. It's been very busy for Monty today. It's done very well. Big O helping in the ruck up against Long. Oh, at ground level, it's what they call Bomber Keenan, number 42. I don't know why they call him Bomber, but that's his nickname. He's the veteran He's the, who has won the award for the best player in the competition on at least one occasion. It's a free kick here, deep in defence uh, to to um, McLeod, to Young Seavers. They get the ball to, to the wing position where Brownlee got the ball across to Dave Adams, who got the ball further forward to where Story's kick is. Uh, well, he's switched play to the outer side, and uh, but it's all it's all Monty there as the big fellow will help and breaks away from half back. Oh, he's got a nice kick there to, to Keenan. He gets the ball over to his teammate who runs through the centre wing position. Spots up a loose teammate at half forward and then they get the ball down. Lovely play there by Montmorency. And it's a lead up there on this occasion. I think it might be Limbach. Renowned goal kicker for the Monty side. Just trying to pick up his number there. It might not be Limbeck. Do you think that's Limbeck, Terry, or not? 
Yep. It is, I think it, oh, it is. Okay. Okay, Lindback comes in, shoots for goal, 30 metres out on a 45 degree angle. That looks good. Oh, not good enough. I might have, did it hit the post or anyway? Or just, just grazed it to the, the behind side and it's through for a one behind one point to Montmorency. That was an excellent uh, transverse of the ball there by Montmorency. Hit the targets all the way down the ground. Did very well. Scooter White brings the ball back into play. It's just a little chip kick in and he spots up Hayden Seavers at half back. Now the man they call H brings the ball up over the centre wing position where O'Brien's in there. Oh, he's taken possession of the ball. He plays on. Uh, then it's all... Play, oh, they're busy possessed. McLeod and oh, Morant working feverishly here. They bring the ball to half forward, and eventually they get to Luke Jackson, who shoots for goal, and he's popped it through for a goal. Excellent play there by Montmorency, and they get their 11th, or maybe even 12th goal of the day. Just waiting for the scoreboard. To, uh, it's the 11th to Luke Jackson, the former. Uh, Centerman from Diamond Creek who decided to switch clubs for reasons better known to himself. Okay, and he's with the winners today. He's with Montmorency or on 11 8 74, Lydia McLeod on 4 7 31. Back at the center bounce, uh, it's Woodens gets a little toe poke forward but only as far as Ben Sinclair he gets the ball down to half forward where Scooter White's in first of the ball he got it nicely over to to Kidd oh but oh the, he's dispossessed it comes to Jackson then it came to Pettifer he shoots down to goal looking for can he find Limbach no he can't oh at ground level H is in there fighting hard for him for McLeod, oh, this guy's going in hard left, right and centre. Eventually there's a snap for goal by Mott Player. And fortunately for McLeod, he's skewed it to the far side and it's through for one behind only. Okay, Scooter White to bring the ball back into play. He's just weighing up his options here. Eventually he goes straight down the middle of the ground. There's a huge pack of players there. Now, at ground level, oh, it's in the back there to Bomber Keenan, and he's taken the result in free 40 metres out from goal, directly in front. Yeah, the very reliable, experienced player in Keenan comes in 40 metres out, directly in front, shoots for goal. Ball's getting heavy, you can tell by that kick, and it's full felt. It's fallen short, but it's fallen in the hands of the big man in Patrick Fitzgerald, and he's just turned around and popped it through for a goal. So the 12th goal of the day goes on the scoreboard to Monty. And they go out to a very sizable eight-goal lead here at the Par Road Oval. 50 point lead it is now, 81 to 31. We're 23 minutes into the third quarter. It's Monty 12 9 81. McLeod 4 7 31. Oh, through Keenan they go forward again, but his kick goes very, very wide here. Running after the ball is so helping now. Helping doesn't know what to do. He's tackled. And he's tackling and the uh, ball just trickles out of his hands and goes over line out of bounds. The umpire says, well, we won't worry about a free kick there. We'll just let the boundary line man throw it back in. Okay, now, from the uh, throw in there, there's a free kick to, to Nugent. Number three, Nugent. Oh, he spots up the man in the centre of the ground. He's done well. Okay. And they're always well tackled, the man in the centre of the ground there by Malik and the umpires that play go on. It's all Monty here as they go wide on this occasion, but they've gone too wide and the ball goes over the line out of bounds, right in front of the light tower there on the outer side of the ground. Ball half forward flank, outer side of the ground, the end to which Montmorency are kicking. Montmorency going left the screen, the Greensboro end of the ground. Okay, in there hard for McLeod, and that occasion was Dave Adams. He's tackled when he hasn't got the ball, and the umpire says, you can have a free kick, son. 
This back with the centre wing position. He drives the ball with a tumbling punt up to half forward. Well, nearly a nice mark there to uh, Montmorency, but eventually, uh, ground level, there's some, uh, an errant kick there, and the free kick has gone to Nick Lynch, the forward for McLeod. He tumbles a kick up towards goal, where eventually it's just forced through for a behind. One point to McLeod. Okay, they get their eighth behind for the day. They go four goals, 8.32. 49 points down from Montmorency. We're out on 81. Just waiting for the ball to come back into play. Brought back into play and they've spotted up Kane Pettifer at half back. He's led up there, taking a nice cut ball mark. He decides to go straight down the line to the centre wing position. Oh, big Fitzgerald there. Oh, you're just too big and strong for O'Brien. He's got about four inches on him and about four stone. Okay, the ball comes back to Pettifer. He bursts through the centre of the ground. They get the ball down close to goal there. In there for uh, Montmorency is the little fella, number 30. You was in there for McLeod. The bench of the ball is over the line and out of bounds. Being thrown back into play. It's O'Brien against Fitzgerald. Oh, there's a scramble kick forward by Montmorency at ground level. Oh, there's pressure on the McLeod defence here. They try and get the ball through for a point, but eventually there's a little touch on the goal line there. And the, and the um, Montmorency player there has done really well and got it through for a goal. It might be a little bloke number 30. Just pick up his number. Yeah, done very well there, Montmorency. They've got it through for another goal. So really rubbing salt into the wounds here of McLeod. It's a, it's a day they're going to want to forget, I believe. <laughs> McLeod has gone into this game with probably arguably five of their best ten players not playing for one reason and another. However, you put 22 out there and they're the ones responsible for the actions on the day. From that centre bounce is a free kick to Ryan Harris, number eight. He drives the ball further forward, looking for uh, Lynch. He nearly marked the ball. He's under a lot of pressure there, and there's another ball up at half forward for McLeod. Ball being thrown in the air. Oh, helping in there against uh, Walter Bianchin at ground level, tries to get a kick off the ground. Eventually it comes to Montmorency play. Uh, the man they call H just tosses the ball out looking for O'Brien. It then comes to ground level to uh, Montmorency players who are free, but uh, the boundary line beat them all over on that occasion. It's Alex Tazadakis, number 10. Haven't seen much of him today. He might have just come on. Ball being thrown back into play. Comes to Scooter White, he gets the ball on his left foot, kicks the ball up just over centre. It's a nice mark there, might have been to Haynes on that occasion. Only gets the ball as far as uh, young Harris. He gets a nice handball over looking for Dave Adams. He's ridden into the turf. Eventually comes out to Haynes, he gets a scramble kick to half forward, but only as far as the McLeod players who handball the ball over to Scooter White. They get the ball up to half forward where Long has interfered with and gets a resultant free kick at half forward. Okay, so it's Chris Long about to bring the ball further forward, but he's beaten by the siren. But Long says, I'll have a kick for goal anyway. I'm 70 metres out. We'll have a big tumbling kick, and it gets as far as the forward pocket. And there we, there we have it for three-quarter time, with Monty leading 39.87 to McLeod, four goals, 8.32. Sort of here at the Par Road Oval. Montmorency leading 39.87, McLeod on 4.832. It's been a long day at the office for McLeod today. Umpire Fife holds the ball off, waiting for the siren. He hears it now. We've got Big O helping in the ruck up against Matty Waller. There's the ball, up they go. A one by O helping. He gets the ball further forward to his team. Oh, 24 just bursts from the centre, lines up the goals and goes bang. It's going close to the tee for goal and it's just touched through. So an excellent start there by 
Montmorency could have been even better if the ball had travelled one more foot. OK, Scooter White brings the ball back into play, drives to the to the back flank area there where, oh, it's a, an easiest of marks to what could be uh, Craig Flint, the big fella from Monty, and he drives the ball, oh, going close to goal there, oh, it's, it could be a mark, could be a mark close to goal there, there is. And sipping the mark, just waiting for him to turn around. Maybe. Well, it is 21, which is Chris Burton. And he comes in and kicks. It's not a, a really nice looking kick. It skewed off his boot, but he was that close to goal. He'd have to fall over to miss. And he's popped that one through. So the first goal of the last quarter goes to Montmorency. And they'll go to 14 goals. I think they're on 10 behinds, just waiting for the scoreboard to tick up. Come on, scoreboard, there we go. 14, 10, 94. McLeod, four goals, eight. 32. So we're over, over 10 goal lead now to Montmorency. Okay, so here we go again, back in the gluey, muddy center of the ground. Umpire, no thought of bouncing, just chuck it in the air today. Uh, Walter wins the, the tap out there, gets the ball down to where Mellican's in there, fighting hard for the ball. And then it's taken by Montmorency, and Mellican wraps him all up, and we'll have another ball up. Host of players around the ball there. Comes the wood and he skews the ball nicely over his shoulder. Gets the half forward for McLeod. The ball's bouncing, bouncing, bouncing there. But oh, it's all Monty. They're working the ball beautifully there. They work the ball to the outer wing right in front of the scoreboard there. And it's close to the boundary line and over the line and out of bounce. Ball being thrown back into play again. Walter rings the tap out, comes the ground level, but uh, oh, just it's all Monty at ground level, but it's, it's uh, intercepted by uh, now Craig Flint. He gets the ball to half forward, where Monty play gets a bit of a clip over the ear from Scooter White. Umpire calls play on, pays advantage. They get the ball down. Oh, it's nearly through for goal. Nearly a mark to Monty here. Oh, they're fighting hard, close to the goal. Oh, O'Brien in there trying to defend for McLeod. He's interfered with the umpire. Has spotted that says Daniel O'Brien you can have a free kick and he chips the ball further along to the the veteran man in Nan Curvis Nan Curvis back in the seniors for his first game for uh, some weeks gets the ball down to half back where big Shane Tennant takes the easiest of marks transfers the ball back into the center to his teammate Luke Jackson Jackson then goes wide, kicking down to uh, half forward, looking for a teammate who's all wrapped up there. The umpire's no hesitation, running and calling for a ball up. Ball thrown in the air there. Comes to Stephen. He's done well today. Number 15 for Montmorency. Montmorency player there at ground level goes this way. That way scrambles the ball further forward, they get the ball to Haynes, oh he's done well, he gets the ball to a hot spot in front of goal there, but oh, defended well there by, might have been uh, Seavers on that occasion and he gets the ball out to the back flank and it's over the line and out of bounds He's only a small man, Seavers for McLeod, but he's got a lot of talent, he's a very busy footballer and very very quick footballer. Ball comes down to uh, Ryan Harris for McLeod at ground level and he's able to intelligently scramble the ball further forward and it's out of bounce on the true centre wing position right in front of the uh, Montmorency Pavilion. Ball being thrown back into play there. Oh, in there is uh, Stephen for Montmorency and he's all wrapped up by Ryan Harris. Umpire calls for another ball up. Okay, oh, and there's a nice tap out there, or oh, punch forward by Matty Waller. Gets the ball just for, uh, 20 metres further forward, or oh, players going in, it's like a mud wrestle. Eventually John Andrew first through the pack, but oh, it comes to Montmorency. They get the ball, scramble it further forward, where it comes down to where Scooter White goes in hard. Then they get the ball out to, oh, Penifer, he took a kick at 
But ball there nearly took Scooter White's head off. The umpire had no hesitation saying have a free kick Scooter White. He chips the ball wide to where Woodens has taken a comfortable mark at half back. He just pops it over the head of the man of the mark and spots up Nan Curvis. He plays on. Just kicks the ball up to half forward where it's all it's all Montmorency there. The big fella in Shane Tennant takes the mark, gets it out to the outer side where his uh, teammate then Taz Tazadakis gets the ball. It's a big up and under kick down to half forward uh, at ground level there. It might have been Andrew Murray in there for McLeod. He's depossessed. A bit hard to say. Players here that are covered in mud. No, it might have been Joel Kidd actually. You know, stand to the forward pocket now for Montmorency, and it's over the line, out of bounds. Monty going to the right of screen, the lower plenty, end of the ground. McLeod left the screen, the Greensboro end of the ground. As the ball goes over the line, out of bounds again. Umpire fights says, throw it back in. It's going to be a very forgettable day for the McLeod side today. There hasn't been too many exciting moments for them. There was a highlight early in the first quarter when uh, uh, Nick Lynch kicked a, uh, a very, uh, very good goal from a snap deep in the forward pocket. That ball's gone through and for another behind to Monty. Scooter White decides to bring the ball back into play again. Drives the ball out to half back. Dave Adams couldn't quite hold on to the ball there. It's gone to ground level. And the umpire says we'll have another ball up. Ball thrown in the air. Comes down to Stephen. He's been in everything for Monty today. Eventually Dave Adams just scrambles the ball along to finds Nick Brannelly. Then to Malik and he's done well. He gets the ball up to... Uh, Half forward looking for Lynch at ground level. Got Richard Andrew running through there. Oh, he's depossessed. Oh, Lynch is, Lynch is interfered with and the umpire have nothing of a free kick. It's just one of those days where they let a lot of things go and just, just ended up resulting in a ball up. Dave Adams tried to uh, get a kick away there. Ball came loose, ended up in the hands of Luke Jackson, I think it was. Adams tackled him. All wrapped up, my umpire calls for another ball up. Dave Adams gets, takes the uh, takes the kick, which from that throw up, he gets on his left foot and finds the boundary. Ball bounced about a foot inside. It's gonna be thrown back into play. Right in front of the pavilion here. There's a huge crowd at the Monty Pavilion here today. It could be um, perhaps two to 300 people there in the pavilion area. Oh, players just wrestling here in the mud. And it's freezing cold here in Melbourne. If if the fastest trombone in the West is listening, it's you're probably blazing with, you know, by a beach or something with your viewing this through your laptop computer. I don't know. We're freezing here, Steve, in Melbourne. It's shocking. It is shocking day. The only thing it hasn't done is it hasn't actually rained during the course of this game. It's just been freezing cold and and just it's just the ground's this mud now. It's just the okay there's 25 players around the ball here. John Andrews in first gets a handball out to Woodhams who gets the ball quickly onto his foot to half forward but in the way there is the Mont defender in number 50 who was James Gall. He gets the ball to the outer side where Monty worked the ball to the centre wing position where the Monty guys tackled near the boundary line the ball comes free and over the line out of bounce throw it in boundary umpire let's throw him back in oh it's just it's just a big mud wrestle here it comes to Ben Haynes he runs around on his left foot and gets a kick up the wing position but in the way there is Scooter White He's done excellent for McLeod today. Him and the other lad, number eight in the centre of the ground, have done well. 
Ryan Harris, he's been at the bottom of every pack all day long. Sean Mellican has done well. Matty Wallace contested very hard, I believe, against uh, the two big men in uh, Halpin and, and Nugent. And sometimes Pat Fitzgerald. The cloud gave forward, but oh, in the way there is the Mont defence. They've done very well. They bring the ball out to the outer side again. They work it beautifully with some nice passing. They've played really well today, Mont. They bring the ball that now into the centre of the ground. They spot up Kane Pettifer. He drives the ball up to half forward. Wow, oh, there is an excellent mark taken deep in defence there by Ryan Harris for McLeod. He gets the ball out to Dave Adams. He gets a nice sweeping handball to Malikan and gets it on to John Andrew. This is looking promising for McLeod. And then the, he delivers beautifully up to the lead up there by Matt Walters. Now Matt Walters has marked the ball 35 to 40 metres out on a 45 degree angle. He's fancying his chances here. It'll have to be a very nice kick because the ball is very, very heavy. Anyway, let's see how he goes. Camera right behind this action. That looks good off the boot. Is it good enough? Is it coming back? It is. And he's just snuck it in. Very nice kick by Matt Water. He gets the fifth goal of the day on the scoreboard to McLeod. They go to five goals, eight. Uh, trailing. Montmorency out on 14 whatever the scoreboard is just ah uh, we're back to the scoreboard now beautiful it says 14 11 95 Monty Lady McLeod five goals 8 38 so they've got it back just under 10 goals but it's still a very sizable lead to Montmorency we're well into the last quarter here and as far as McLeod's concerned they just want to put up a spirited effort for the rest of the game and uh, then get out of here. Ball thrown in the air by umpire five. Big O'Halpin gets a left-handed belt away there, but it doesn't go that far. Gets the ground level. Players going in hard there. Oh. Umpires, no hesitation after. 15 seconds of total scramble to uh, call for another ball up. Ball thrown there, there. Might have been Nugent on that occasion, got the ball forward for Montmorency. They get the ball close to goal, but in defence there might have been, well, the McLeod guys did well. It might have been Nan Curvis and Scooter White involved in the play there. He's just continually in the play, that guy Scooter White. He's got a fantastic amount of ability and, and ability particularly to read the play. And okay, ball comes back into play there. Long's done well there, gets a quick handball over to Woodens. He drives the ball up to the centre position where there's a mark to Montmorency. They handball the ball over to number six in Haynes. Oh, he kicks the ball beautifully to his teammate. Uh, number 24, who is Jesse Donaldson, but uh, he messes it up. Eventually they, the ball goes further forward and Woodhams is pushed in the back and takes the resultant free kick for McLeod. He gets the handball across to Scooter White, but uh, his kick hasn't hit the mark on this occasion. And in the way is James Booker. Now it's intercepted by uh, Dave Adams, where it goes forward and uh, the big fellow there flints in there for Montmorency. Oh, it's picked up by Brennerley. He goes this way, he goes that way, gets back on his right foot. He kicks for goal. It's close to goal, but not close enough. And it's through for one behind, one point to McLeod. Gee, um, Malikin went in hard there for McLeod and created an opportunity when the ball spilled out to Brennerley. He just couldn't quite finish off on that occasion. Ball goes to the outer side there, long up high for not cloud, but it's all Montmorency. They work the ball down to the big fella O'Halpin. He gets on his left foot and drives the ball down over half forward. Oh, there's a big fly there by Montmorency play. Couldn't quite hang on to it, but at ground level, they're up to the task and they work the ball further forward. But uh, it's intercepted on this occasion by what have been Andrew Murray. Gets the ball to his teammate, who is John Andrew. He does a bit of a tunnel ball uh, show there and the umpire says you can't do that son, that's not a correct disposal, there's a free kick to Montmorency. They get the ball down to uh, down to half forward where the McLeod guy is uh, dealt with unceremoniously 
and umpire five says oh, i won't have anything to do with giving you a free kick son we'll just ball it up ball it up he does comes down to montmorency who have a clear shot on goal now and they shoot it down for, oh, it falls short but right in the arms of the teammate might have been uh who's got the ball there limbach dean dean limbach i believe it is number eight a prolific goal kicker for Montmorency he comes in lines up for the 15th goal of the day for Montmorency that looks good off the boot does the umpire like it let's have a look what's he say he says it's a goal that's the 15th goal for Montmorency they stretch the lead out to over 10 goals and as far as McLeod's concerned the end can't come quick enough they just want to get off the ground and reflect a little bit on the game and have a hot shower and head off to wherever they're going to head off I know where I'm going. I'm going home. Going home, Terry. <laughs> Put the fire on. Just collapse on the couch. Watch the footy, whoever's playing. Who's playing tonight, Terry? Dunno. Dunno. Okay, there's the ball. Greg Champion night. I suppose some people are going to a night with Greg Champion at the Alfin Community Centre. Uh, so let's hope they have a good night. So be good. Greg Champion sings his, uh, his footy ditties and everyone has a laugh. Fantastic. Okay. They get the ball out the outer side, Montmorency. They're working the ball beautifully here. On this occasion, they can't quite hold on to the ball. Ball's near the boundary line. Players on both sides going in hard here. Eventually, they just work to the boundary line and it's over the line. And out of bounds. Very much a non-eventful day for McLeod here today. Mind you, McLeod's gone in with probably uh, five of their best ten players not playing today. But that's football. Sometimes you don't have your... Well, very rarely do you have your best side on the park. The ball's come out to the Vivian side where Woodhams has done well. He's run around the uh, man on the mark there. Comes down to Dave Adams. Unfortunately, the ball stopped for him in the, in the glue pot there. Then it goes back to Tennant, the experienced defender for... Montmorency and he's all wrapped up and there'll be another ball up there half forward flank for the inside of the ground well Nugent runs in there just knocks the ball straight back over the boundary line the umpire says no nah, that, that wasn't deliberate just chuck it back in we'll have another go okay Nugent wins the tap out on this occasion comes down to Lynch he scrambles the ball further forward uh, but it's all Montmorency there they defend very well we get the ball down looking for Walton but in the road there is Rory Scott he tumbles the ball up to the centre forward position to a dangerous spot in the way there was there was uh, Tennant and all of the experience Ben Haynes but he tries to defend his kicks is, is intercepted and it's over the line and out of bounds ball forward pocket out of sight of the ground the end to which McLeod is kicking the Greensboro end of ground throwing back into play Oh, players all around the ball there. Umpire's got no option to just say, give it to me, boys, and we'll, we'll have a ball up. Umpire throws the ball in the air. Oh. Nugent gets a belt away towards the boundary line. And it eventually finds the boundary, and it's over the line, and Alabounce right in front of the Buckingham real estate sign over there. Ball thrown back into play. Comes down to the big fella, Giles. Oh, he works this to his teammate. It might have been Keenan, Bomber Keenan on that occasion. Gets the ball into half forward. Here it comes to Nan Curvis. He's driven into the into the turf there. It's a free kick to McLeod. They get the ball to, through Scooter White out to O'Brien. He gets an unfavourable bounce, but he's good enough to pick the ball up. Bounces off his opponent. Gets the ball over to Rory Scott. He tumbles the ball up to half forward. Where it might have been Cogger, was it missed what he should have taken? In the end, of the, it's Keenan who picks up the ball, gets the ball to half forward. But in the way there is the Scooter White who takes a magnificent diving mark. Gets the ball over to O'Brien who drives the ball up to half forward. Big pack of players go up there. In hard there is a McLeod player and he's all wrapped up. The umpire says, we'll have another ball up. Well, the McLeod guys have... Uh, Stuck to the task here today uh, against the odds. The far bigger, stronger side than them 
and uh, arguably experienced, the uh, Montmorency side. And uh, Montmorency got himself a good, comfortable 10-goal uh, lead at this stage. Now, in saying that, full credit to Montmorency. They've, they've played their home ground beautifully here today. They've um, been strong around the contest. They've had uh, been strong in the air with uh, particularly having two uh, very big players there in Fitzgerald and uh, helping, supported by Nugent. A couple of strong... Uh, Strong forwards in Limbach and uh, Pettifer. They've got a very good side. And they would have to fancy their chances for a premiership to finally make its way to the uh, the Parra Road Oval. As they have another shot and goal there, Monty, and they get through for one more behind. Harris just leaving the ground here for Monty. He's got a bit of a limp up. Could be the end of his day. He's been... Uh, a real good warrior effort by that fellow today in the middle of the ground. Now, McLeod trying to bring the ball back out of defence. They chip the ball up to Rory Scott who drives up towards the, the wing position. Story flies high. He can't mark the ball on that occasion. Eventually the ball is over the line and out of bounds. Right in front of the McLeod uh, coaching fraternity. Mm. Lynch is uh, up the ground, seems to be in perhaps an on-ball roll at the moment. A bit hard to say. The ball comes out to the little fellow, Ben Haynes, the experienced Ben Haynes. He uh, he links up in the chain of handballs for Monty to eventually get a nice clear shot on goal. And they go bang. And they slot another one. Their 16th goal of the day goes on the scoreboard. And they scoot further away, the Montmorency lads. have done very, very well today. Excellent play there. They go to 16 goals, 12. Make that 108, leading the cloud on 5-9-39. We're deep into the last quarter. We're t time clock showing 22 minutes, 27 seconds. And that final siren can't come quick enough for the McLeod boys now. Okay, from the centre bounce, it's Luke Jackson working his way out of the centre bounce. He spots up a man on the defensive side of the of centre on his own. He gets the ball to him, so he's able to then get the ball down easily down to half forward for Montmorency. And then they chip the ball further forward, and there's a safe mark taken about 45 metres out from goal. Oh, Monty go to play on, but oh, the ball falls out of the hands of the players there. Then they get the the ball down no near near goal it's very close to goal oh there's a shot on goal there by Monty it didn't quite hit the mark there and eventually oh, no, nearly went through McLeod are able to clear and it's over the line out of bounds deep in the back pocket out of side of the ground Walter rings the wins the knockout there just comes the ground level there now and the players are all wrapped up Umpire Fife comes in, throws the ball in the air. And he'll just call for another ball up. Walter wins the tap out. Comes down to McLeod player, might have been Adams on that occasion, gets the ball up the centre wing, but it's all, all Mont deep in defence there. They take a uh, safe mark there. And drive the ball back to the half forward position keeping the pressure on the McLeod defence and the ball close to the boundary line right in front of the light tail there and it's over the line and out of bounce tick 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 goes the time clock and it's showing 24 minutes and 31 seconds last quarter here at the Parra Road Oval players going hard for the ball there Oh, they've earned the keep, their keep today, a lot of these players. It's a hard day at the office. <laughs> Mind you, in saying that, many of them wish they had played a little bit better, but... 
you have your good days and your not so good days in footy. So McLeod hasn't been a, a memorable day, however, they're still going in hard for the ball. Monty have been clearly the better side today. Been able to capitalise on their forays forward. Stephen, number 15, who's had many possessions today, gets hold of the ball, shoots for goal, but it's a wayward kick, and it's out on the full. As the siren goes, shows Monty a clear winner today. 16 12, 108, defeated McLeod, five goals, 9 39, and it's over and out from.